Welcome, debtors and borrowers, to Bankruptcy Bailout, because debt ruins lives, not bankruptcy. Bankruptcy is your bailout. It is your lifeline to get out of debt. My name is Matt Burkus. I'm a Colorado bankruptcy and student loan relief attorney. And today we're discussing the recently announced round of student loan forgiveness by the Department of Education. They're forgiving the loans of about 100,000 borrowers to the tune of, of over $6 billion uh, was the number that I saw. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the press releases or a, a lot of the reporting on this round of forgiveness is very misleading. So let's break down what this forgiveness is covering, you know, who qualifies and how it works. So this round of forgiveness relates to the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. So in a nutshell, that program says that if you work for a qualified employer, typically either the government or charity, and you do so for 10 years, and then during that 10 year period, you make payments on your student loans on time and for whatever amount your payment plan calls for, then at the end of that 10 year period, you apply for public service loan forgiveness to have the balance or the remaining balance of your student loans wiped out and forgiven. Now, uh, there's been issues with people qualifying for this. There's been a lot of applications submitted and many of those applications have been rejected. So the Department of Education under the Biden administration has been addressing these issues for why a lot of these applications were being rejected. And that's what's being addressed with this 100,000 borrowers uh, having their loans forgiven. The Biden administration had updated some of the rules about what the qualifying payments are. And so what they did is they sort of went back and audited the existing applications and found people who were rejected previously, but now qualify under some of the new guidelines for uh, public service loan forgiveness. Now, there's not a whole bunch of new guidelines. Really, it just says the new guideline is just that though any payment you make during the period will qualify regardless of what payment plan you're on. And heck, even if you didn't even make a payment in full, as long as you made a payment, um, that is still a qualifying payment. And then the other substantive change that they've made is when someone go, this will take a little bit of explanation. When someone has very old loans under the old student loan program, that's the FFELP program or the Family Federal Education um, Loan Program, uh, those old loans are not eligible for public service loan forgiveness. Only the newer program, the direct loan program loans, are eligible for public service loan forgiveness. However, there is, a, there is an option for people with old FFEL loans to consolidate their loans into direct loans. However, the problem with that is it reset your payment period. And what the Biden administration did is waive that resetting. So what it, it allowed people to do is count the payments they made while they had FFEL loans in addition to whatever additional payments they needed to make under direct loans. So hypothetically, if you had made 10 years of qualifying payments under FFEL, then consolidated into direct loans, you could immediately apply for public service loan forgiveness and you wouldn't have to go through another 10 year payment period to get public service loan forgiveness. So that was really the two changes that they made. One, that pretty much any payment is going to count towards uh, the required payments for public service loan forgiveness. And when you had older loans that you needed to consolidate into direct loans, uh, the payments on the older loans will also count as well. What hasn't changed is that you have to work for a qualified employer in a qualified position, and you had to have done so for 10 years. So this round, this $100,000 basically, or $100,000, this, <laughs> these 100,000 borrowers were people who already submitted their application. Okay, the, the Department of Education didn't go out and find these people and say, hey, you're eligible for public service loan forgiveness. The Department of Education has no way to do that. So you still have to submit an application for public service loan forgiveness because you have to say, yeah, I've worked at this employer or this, this, these qualified employers for this period of time. So you still have to demonstrate that to the Department of Education. And then it's up to your servicers to say, okay, here's the payment history. And then that's what gets reviewed for either acceptance or rejection of the application. So what happened here is they just went back and said, oh, these, these um, applications that were rejected because of uh, problematic payment history, they went back and reviewed those, and that's who is getting this $100,000. $100, I keep doing that, $100,000. That's the 100,000 borrowers that are having their loans 
uh, forgiven in this announcement that they recently made. So I hope that clears up the issue for you. Um, again, um, the, there's this temporary waiver in place that allows people with older loans to, to have their payments applied or have the old payments count towards um, public service loan forgiveness, but that's temporary. So if you are one of these people who has older FFEL loans um, and you are trying to get public service loan forgiveness, you still have to consolidate into a direct loan and there is a process for that. Okay, but at least when you apply for public service loan forgiveness, your payment history on the older FFEL loans will count. Uh, if you had your public service loan application rejected at some point, um, you may be captured in this review. It really depends on the reason that you were rejected, but you can always resubmit a new application. My name is Matt Burkus. I'm a Colorado bankruptcy and student loan relief attorney. I help people obtain student loan relief, so that's one of the services that I do offer. I offer initial consultations to student loan borrowers around the country, and those consultations do cost $169, and we hold them by phone, and we try to get you pointed in the right direction uh, with your student loans. And it, but if it is something we can help you with, we certainly will offer our services and discuss what's involved with that. Best of luck to you.